Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from josephprince.com. Forgiven, by the way, forgiven here, you can learn Greek. Say perfect tense. tense. I've used this before. Now, this is the definition of perfect tense. Perfect tense. Past completed action with present ongoing results. That means something is done once and for all like Jesus Christ, finish at the cross. One completed action. He won't come back next year and cry finish again. (laughs) It's finished once and for all with what? Presently ongoing, continuous results. That means you are forgiven. So forgiven here, back to the verse again. Forgiven is one completed act, all right, which is when you're born again, based on the work of the cross, with present continuous results. What does that mean? You remain forgiven. You're always forgiven. Are you listening? It's perfect tense, people. That means once and for all, you are forgiven with present continuing results. Then they come up with this theory. They tell us, oh, that, this one is judicial forgiveness. 1 John 1 9 is parental forgiveness. Now you got two types of forgiveness. One is parental, one is judicial. So what is judicial? Judicial means all of us are forgiven when we accept Christ of our past, present, and future sins. Okay? But when we sin, there's a parental forgiveness. Why parental? Oh, because, you know, my son is always my son. When my son sins, he's still my son. All right? Relationship is not broken, but fellowship is broken. Really? Then what happens? My son must say sorry. La. If my son don't say sorry, what you're saying in essence, your son don't say sorry, you will never forgive your son. If you go by 1 John 1, 9, it's only when you say sorry you are forgiven. But actually, do, does any parent really do that? When your, your son sins or when your son does something, you know, commit a faux pas, do you like wait until no fellowship, until you say sorry? I, I, I pity your boy. No, the moment your son sins, you forgive him. And your forgiveness creates an atmosphere for him to come and say sorry if he wants to. Amen? And you want him to. But you don't forgive him then. You have forgiven him. Okay, maybe some of you don't, but, you know, normal parents... So that's what they tell us, all right, to restore fellowship, you must say, you must confess your sin to restore fellowship. Honestly, you know, this idea of relationship is not broken, fellowship is broken, but in the Bible, there's no such thing as relationship, one word, uh, uh, fellowship, one word. It's the same word, koinonia, there's only one word. And really, what is parental forgiveness? Really, when people hear this, yes, you are forgiven of all your sins, past, present, and future. But actually, when you receive Christ, you're forgiven of your past sins. From now on, you must confess when you sin. That makes you self-occupied, self-conscious. And they say, but what's this idea, Pastor Prince, of telling people their sins are forgiven past, present, and future? You think that people, you think that people who think that their sins are forgiven past, present, and future will, will become licentious, rebellious. But Jesus said, to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. Whoever is forgiven much will love much. So obviously you and the Lord are not seeing things eye to eye on this matter. Jesus, the Lord Jesus believed the more people know they are forgiven, the more they will love Him. So to preach full forgiveness, really, what is parent, what is, is that people, oh, judicially you are forgiven. Experientially you are not. You must confess, then you are forgiven. This parental forgiveness. People don't understand that. People just leave, you know what? I, I, I don't think I've confessed all my sins. I, think, I don't think God will hear me. And the devil comes like Joshua, the high priest, and he whisper and whisper and whisper, effectively stop the grace of God in your life. You know, this parental forgiveness, let me ask you a question. When the prodigal son came back, from afar, the father saw him. What did the father do? The father says, confess! <laughs> no, did the father do that? Come on, you talk to me, people. All right, did the father, okay, this, this is parental forgiveness. Parent here, parent, son, father, father, boy. I love the way Jesus shares parables, you know. It comes right home. So, 
the son was far away. Don't forget, the son effectively told the father, I can't wait for you to die or drop dead. I want my inheritance now. And that's what he did. He squandered his inheritance. So this boy is coming back now. What did the father do? The father saw. Did the father say, he's coming back finally. <laughs> this father, I understand, normal in our eyes. But you know, the, the, what, the, story, the story the Lord shared about the father here is amazing. He's talking about his own heavenly father. He saw the son afar off and he did this. Pull up his long ropes and started running. Did the boy confess first or he ran first? Ran, ran. ran first. Met the boy, embraced the boy. Did the boy confess first or embrace first? Embrace. embrace. Then after embracing, kiss the boy who now smell and reek of pigs. <laughs> and for the Jew, that is, that is the pits. Wow, kissing, kissing the boy all over. Did the boy confess yet? No. The father gave. No. It produced the boy saying, Father, I've sinned against heaven and earth. But that was after. It didn't produce the embrace. It didn't produce the, 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 the kisses. Question, is this parental or judicial? I myself am confused. <laughs> because the story of the Father here is our Lord, our, our Lord sharing about His heavenly Father. If, anything, if, if language is anything, all right, this is parental forgiveness. Now you have judicial, you have parental, you know, a man, it, I, I'll be very concerned if a man goes around and says, Pastor Prince, you, you misunderstand, Pastor. Be cool now, Pastor Prince, be cool. All right, I am judicially married. <laughs> Let's say I, I, I caught him with another girl. All right, he said, look, Pastor, I, I'm judicially married. But, but, experientially, I'm not. Know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Not? <laughs> you are married. <laughs> yeah, any, any, authority, any body of authority will see that you are married. Amen. You might not feel married. Sometimes you wish you were not married. All right? But the thing is that you're married. So this is judicial and experiential. You ought to make it experiential because here's where it comes in. People, if you tell me this kind of thing, effectively most people will live in condemnation because they will think that uh, judicial is never real. It's just judicial. Honestly, who thinks of judicial? Just judicial, you know, but experiential. People always think of experiential. But the truth is, there's no judicial and parental. It's all you're forgiven. Amen. Don't, don't play around with God's word. When God says you're forgiven, God means what He says. Amen. Are you with me so far? All right, there's something else we need to do. Real quick. Now, the Bible says we are forgiven once and for all with continuing results. What does that mean? You must hold on to the fact you're forgiven. I'm going to show you a word around here, and I, I think uh, we only have time for this, and I wish we can go on. But look at this uh, in uh, Romans chapter 5. Therefore, having been justified by faith. Are you all justified by faith? Not by your performance, not by works, by, by faith in what Christ has done. Are you? Now, having been justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, many a times we say, you know, we have peace. We have peace with God, you know. But actually, the word we have, now learn another Greek word, okay? Look up here. Present tense. You know what's present tense in the Greek? It means present. <laughs> All right? It's present continually. If it says present, it means continually. Now, there's a present active. In, in the Greek, there's a voice, active or passive, right? Active means the boy, the boy threw the ball. Passive is the, 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 the boy got hit by the ball. You all know this, right? Watch this. We have peace. Many of us think, well, we have peace in a passive way. You know, we are justified by faith. We all have peace with God. Yo, you know, we have peace with God. And yet not many people are possessing it. So let me just tell you this. There's a word. The word have, number one, is a powerful word in the Greek. It is the word echo in the Greek. And echo means, listen, echo means to hold in the hand, to have to possess, to enjoy. So when it says we have peace, it's not this passive, passive, uh, you know, uh, we have peace with God because we are now justified by faith. We have peace with God. No, no. It is hold on to it. Enjoy it. And guess what? Go back to Romans. We have present active, not passive. Hold on to it. In other words, you must say, whenever you fail, Father, I thank you, I'm forgiven. Thank you, Father God, that I have peace with you. 
thank you, Father God, that you will not count these sins against me. When the devil comes to you and says, you'll be sick, I'll make one of your child sick because that, 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 that week you did this or that time you did that. All right, you must say, if, hold fast to what this verse is saying. No, I have peace with God. God is on my side. God is on the side of my child. My child and my family will not suffer for my sins that have been forgiven. You must possess it. You must claim it. You must say it. You don't say it to be forgiven. You say it because you already are. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com. You believe wrong, you experience wrong. If you're still battling with toxic emotions, you feel fearful about something. Somewhere along the way, there's been wrong thinking that produced that wrong emotion. And why is there wrong thinking? There's wrong believing. And why is there wrong believing? Many a times, people have heard the wrong thing. There's something about men that we have an inclination towards the negative side. We gotta learn to focus on purpose, on things that are good, positive. Jesus says to this lady, your faith has made you well. He told blind Bartimaeus, according to your faith, be it unto you. Everything is received by faith and you want to have faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing. And hearing what? The gospel of peace, good news. If you want to see goodness, you want to see manifestation in your life, keep on hearing. Don't get discouraged. Keep on hearing and hearing. The pastor is not manifesting. Keep on hearing. Your days will be the days of heaven for you and your family. And not only that, all the blessings of Deuteronomy 28 will be in your life.